Who would have won the 2019 CFP playoffs if the field was expanded from 4 all the way to 12? Welcome back to the channel guys. In this video, we're going to be going over the hypothetical scenario where if the CFP had 12 teams make the playoff instead of the original 4. As you see in this slide, we're going to be going, we have the original 4 teams, LSU 1, Ohio State at 2, Clemson at 3, Oklahoma at 4. Those are the 4 uh, Power 5 champions. And obviously Oregon, you can see to the right, uh, with number six, ranked six was your last Power 5 champion. And, and the highest rated Group of Five champion was Memphis, followed by Boise State and Appalachian State there at 19 and 20. So that was your original 14 playoff with all your other Group of Five and Power 5 conference champs. How would this look like if we had a 12 team playoff? So we're going to start off with the number one seed overall. Nothing else is going to change. LSU, they had one of the better uh, toughest schedules we could see in recent memory as you can see there to the right they had seven teams they had seven teams that were ranked in the top 40 of all the power ratings so seven of their 13 squad over half their opponents were in the top 40 so and then we had at least three there in the top 10 so they had three elite opponents and seven good good quality opponents and obviously they went 13 and 0 and they had averaged 48 points per game and gave up 22 so LSU definitely earned the number one overall seed. The number two seed was the Ohio State Buckeyes, another 13-0 Power 5 champion. Their resume was just as good, if not a little bit better, than LSU. Every, All three of their non-conference uh, games that they played, every opponent either won or played in their conference championship game. FAU played it in Conference USA, Cincinnati played in the American, and Miami, Ohio played in the MAC conference championship game. As well as the rest of their schedule, they played another. They also played seven teams ranked in the top 40, as well as five of those being ranked in the top, or four of those being ranked in the top 15. So they played Wisconsin twice. Michigan was a good quality win, as well as Penn State being right there at six was their best win of the season. 47 points a game, only give up 14. Bigger uh, points per game margin, the number one in the country. Uh, they were just they had one of the best resumes and analytically rating they're probably one of the best team uh, in the nation going into the playoff number three would be the Clemson Tigers again there's no change with this Clemson uh, averaged 44 points a game and the crazy defense only gave up 14 points a game they uh, they had the number one defense I think yardage going into this but their strength of schedule was very very weak compared to all the other teams in these top four at least they only had two teams raked in the top 40 and only one team in the top 20 that was texas a&m second week of the season virginia was ranked 38th they lost four games already uh and they uh there was their second best team they played in the conference championship game obviously they whooped them then 62 17 but no other good big quality wins they just demolished every team they played i think after the texas a&m game or after the north carolina game as you see there they only won by one every single game was won by at least 35 points so how weak their schedule was they just had pure domination with the opponents they were given in front of them and finally the fourth team to get a first round by and in the playoffs was the oklahoma sooners they averaged 42 a game gave up 27 so their defense is kind of weak that's kind of how the leak and riley era was at oklahoma they played seven again another seven teams they played in the top 40 they their best opponent was baylor who they played twice rated uh, 17th overall in the analytics so and their only loss was on the road at kansas state in manhattan they was they were getting blown out and they kind of made it a nice comeback and almost had an onside kick comeback but they eventually fall short they went on to beat baylor that amazing comeback they're down by 25 points in waco uh, in uh, November 16th, and then they beat them again in the Big 12 Championship in overtime, 30-23, uh, to 23, to get their spot as the final fourth, uh, final seed to get in a play uh, bye in this year's four, four team playoff. So, those are your four teams to get a bye. The fifth seed will be the Georgia Bulldogs. Losers to LSU in the SEC Championship game. They played another decent uh, strength of schedule, even though they played in the SEC East, they still played Notre Dame non-conference, who's ranked ninth, and they still played six other opponents that are ranked in the top 40, including Auburn, who ranked 11th, Florida at number 10, Texas A&M at 18th. The only team they lost to in that stretch, or in these six opponents, was LSU, obviously the number one rated team. They beat three of those top 20 teams, and but the bad loss they had was the South Carolina at home, second week of October. 
in overtime, two overtimes, 17 to 20. That was a bad loss to a four and eight South Carolina team. I mean, they had no chance against LSU, honestly. They lost by 27, but they did enough to earn the highest rated at large team in this playoff. They're the first first team off the board at the five seed. Number six seed is the Oregon Ducks, the Pac-12 champion. They with Justin Herbert, they kind of they lost to Auburn in week one in the last second. I think Bo Nix tossed it with about 15 seconds left in the in the AT&T Stadium, Dallas, Texas. That was week one. Then they went on to win nine straight games before they went to Tucson, Arizona and got upset by Arizona State, led by Jaden Daniels at the time at Arizona State. Uh, but in that stretch, they went on to win three uh, three other games in the top 40. And then they played Utah in the conference championship game. Utah was vying for that last four spot in the original 14 playoff. And they just got blown out by Oregon, 37-15. Utah fell, they they played a weaker schedule, we'll get to them in a second, I do believe they were in this, but Oregon did enough to get the, the last highest rated Power 5 conference champion, and they were coming in at the 6th seed in this hypothetical playoff. Coming in the 7th seed, the Baylor Bears, a loser of the Big 12, only two losses were to the 4th seed, Oklahoma, they had really good quality wins though over Iowa State, Kansas State, Oklahoma State, TCU, and Texas. Another seven opponents played in the top 40. That's that's how kind of the Big 12 was overall. 34 points a game to 20 given up. Uh, not too spectacular, but pretty well it, given the fact that, they, again, they play in the Big 12. Had a lot of close games in there, but they still won most of them. They lost by three and by seven, respectively, to Oklahoma in both times they played them. But they did enough to get a home playoff game in the seventh 12-team playoff. They get the seventh seed in the first round. Finally, the last team do get a home playoff game is the loser of the Big Ten, Wisconsin, finishing at 10 and three. They only two lo they lost to Ohio State twice, uh, once at Columbus in middle the end of October, and then recently the most recent game in the Big Ten championship. They had a halftime lead 21 to seven before they gave up four straight touchdowns to lose by 13 in that one. But the only other loss they had was a bad loss, a six loss uh, Illinois there. Middle, they were 73rd ranked, lost in a last second field goal, and that kind of they were at top five at that point after demolishing Michigan in the third week of the season and then destroying Michigan State with four shutouts in their first six games, they kind of hit a weird trend with them. They lost two in a row. They lost Ohio State. And they had a close game against Iowa and then as well as Nebraska. Uh, they demolished Purdue and then had a winner-take-all game against Minnesota at on the road in Minneapolis where they just kind of took took their will. Won 38-7 to advance to the Big Ten Championship. But Wisconsin strength the schedules in top 10 and they definitely earned the 8th spot as one of the last teams to get a home playoff game for this 12-team playoff. Their opponent in the first round will be the aforementioned Utah Utes at 11-2. Only two losses were to Southern Cal the fourth week of the season and then they got demolished by Oregon in the Pac-12 Championship game. But in between there, they had three good quality wins over top 40 opponents, and they were just killing everybody too. You see, 38-13, 52-7, 35-0 over California. They won a close game against Washington. Washington won eight games, 49-3 uh, over UCLA, 35-7, and they won by 30 over Colorado. So they had a lot of good quality, you know, one-sided victories in this. It's just their strength of schedule wasn't too good, and that's why they'll, as an 11-2 conference champion loss, they dropped to the nine seed, but still make this 12-team playoff. The 10th seed, the Florida Gators team that lost to Georgia and LSU. They're only two losses of the season. Number one and five ranked team in the power ratings. They had a good quality win, elite win over Auburn, and only good quality wins over Kentucky and Tennessee. Other than that, they played Tennessee Martin, FCS School, Vanderbilt, Missouri, Florida State, all teams ranked outside the top 40. Kind of lackluster, but still get the 10 wins as an SEC school. Uh, you definitely did enough to get in this 12-team playoff. And they will go on the road to Waco to face Baylor Bears in the first round. The 11th seed, the Penn State Nittany Lions, team that started off 9 and, or 8-0, got the number four in the initial CFP playoffs before dropping on the road at Minnesota to get them their biggest win of, in probably the last 100 years, 31-26. Uh, to 26. Then they went on the road, to, then they went to beat Indiana and then played Ohio State two weeks later and they lost. Hard-fought game. That game was actually, it, it seemed like it was kind of, you know, took forever to get up, but Ohio State's one of the best teams in the nation. And, go on the road and only lose by 11. Uh, that was a pretty good quality game for them. They also had good, really good wins against Iowa, Michigan, and Michigan State. So Penn State, even though they dropped two loss, two games, they still a really quality opponent. 36 a game versus only 16 given up. 
So they are the late 11 seed, go on the road to Oregon to face the Ducks in the first round. And finally, the last of the conference champion, the group of five representative, will be the Memphis Tigers, a team that finished 12 and 1, ended the season with two consecutive victories over Cincinnati, once in the regular season at home, and then they hosted them again the very next week, one by five, to claim the American Championship. I don't think they've ever won it before then. Only other quality win they had was against Navy at 22. Uh, the only, but the only loss they had was to Temple uh, on the road in the middle of October. They had a pretty good win against SMU. I think game day was featured there. Uh, SMU rated 48th, uh, but not other, not too good a quality wins the rest of the season. But they were definitely the highest rated, power rated team in the group of five, and they did enough to get the last spot in this 12-team playoff. So. This is how the, the layout go. LSU, Ohio State, Clemson, Oklahoma, your four teams that get a bye. And they, they faced all these aforementioned first-round games, home and away. So, with this layout, who would win the 2019 college football playoff? We'll start with the Wisconsin-Utah game. I do believe Wisconsin would win this. I think they're, they had an overall better team. They played a much harder schedule. Jonathan Taylor was just a monster this year. And Utah kind of faltered at the end. I think they got exposed by Oregon. I don't think they do much against the Badgers. And I think they would move on to face LSU in the Rose Bowl. Second game, Georgia, I think, would have absolutely no problem taking care of Memphis. Georgia, one of the better teams. Obviously, they're the highest rated at-large team. So the best non non-conference champion uh, Georgia was. And they're definitely going to take do whatever they want to with Memphis and they're gonna move on to face Oklahoma in the Sugar Bowl in the quarterfinals Baylor against Florida I think Baylor wins this I think Florida kind of is a little overhyped yeah they played tough against LSU and they played tough against Georgia but I think Baylor they're only two close losses to Oklahoma and have their regulars the reg rest of their schedule being pretty good I think Baylor takes at, at home I think they take Florida down to the wire but ultimately beat them and they go on to the second round the quarterfinals to face Ohio State in the Orange Bowl finally Oregon Ducks hosting Penn State. This is a tough one because both teams are really, really good. I do believe the Oregon Ducks, though, would prevail. I think Justin Herbert would do enough for this team to overcome Penn State's pesky defense, and I think they would get the job done. If there was a, in the real format, the four team, if this team was actually going to be in, I think they would have had a legit chance to make a run in the eight, a four team or 18, 12 team playoff, whatever it may be in real life, because this team is hot going into the last few weeks of the season. So they win over Penn State. They go on to face Clemson in the quarterfinals in the Cotton Bowl. So quarterfinal matchup number one, LSU versus Wisconsin. I think this one should be a no-brainer. I think Joe Burrow and LSU would, I don't think they'd blow out Wisconsin. I think Wisconsin defense is one of the best in the country. I just think eventually this might be like, like they played against Florida. It'd be close kind of to the end, kind of decent scoring, and then LSU would score once or twice kind of to pull away to that two-score game. And I think Wisconsin would eventually lose uh, to LSU. LSU moves on to the semifinals in the Peach Bowl, where they would face the winner of Georgia versus Oklahoma. I mean, I think Georgia's going to win this one again. I think Oklahoma is with Jalen Hurts. They got exposed in real life. I think it was 62-14 to 14 against LSU. Absolutely dismantled. I think Georgia, I don't think they would do quite that extent against Oklahoma. But I think they would win by at least two scores over Oklahoma. They just have absolutely no defense. Georgia was just ground and pound. And they would move on to the semifinals to face LSU in the Peach Bowl in their SEC Championship game rematch. Now, the other side, Ohio State against Baylor in the Orange Bowl. I think Ohio State wins. I think Baylor, good team. Ohio State was just that much better. Most people's power rating going into the final week of the season had Ohio State at number one unanimously, mainly because LSU's defense, even though they're excellent, they still weren't as good uh, ratings and stats-wise compared to Ohio State. So I think Ohio State's going to move on, beat Baylor pretty soundly. I think it's going to be like a 38-17 kind of game. And uh, they would move on to the semifinals to face the winner of Oregon against Clemson in the Cotton Bowl. And in this outcome, I do believe Oregon will come out victorious. I think Justin Herbert would do enough against this Clemson squad. How, yes, Clemson beat Ohio State in the in the real time in the semifinal to move on to the national championship game to face LSU. But I think given a chance against this team, I think Oregon would match up perfectly with them especially their, their defense against Clemson's offense. I think Justin Herbert would do just enough, and that offense would prevail over Clemson to advance to the semifinals. So, semifinals. Number one, LSU-Georgia SEC Championship game rematch. Ohio State versus Oregon in the other semifinal in the Fiesta Bowl. So, LSU versus Georgia. I think it would be just a repeat of what happened before. I think LSU is going to beat Georgia. I don't think it's 37-10. I mean, it could have been, but I, either way, I think LSU is going to win. They're going to move on to the national championship game. 
Uh, and there's really no else to say. I think Georgia's just not as good as LSU was that year. So, Ohio State versus Oregon. This is another tough one. Justin Herbert and the Oregon squad was really good, but Ohio State, they just, they were just so good. And this was, I, I think in real life, everybody wanted this Ohio State LSU uh, matchup in the national championship game, but I think we were robbed. So, in this hypothetical scenario, I think we finally get what one of the biggest what ifs in college football history. We say, LSU 2019 versus 2019 Ohio State. Who would win this? This would have been a battle of all-time elites, the all-time great offense that LSU had versus the all-time overall Ohio State. I think they're still the highest rated, power rated Ohio State team uh, in recent memory, I think of all time. And the way they played most of these games, the way they played, uh, just the style of play, how they just dismantled teams. They, they easily had the biggest points per game margin of any team. I think in, if this were actually a game scenario, and if Joe Burrow was to play his old Ohio State team, who would win this? I honestly think Ohio State would come out on top. I think Ohio State, again, like I said, every power rated scenario had them as number one. They were the number one team in the CFP until the final week of the season when they, yeah, they won by 13, but they kind of looked kind of a dismal against Wisconsin in the first half, and LSU won by 27, so that's why they just flip-flopped those two teams. Uh, but I do think Ohio State, if they were given the chance to face LSU, they would have won. It would have been a really close game, but I think Ohio State would have won this, and it would have been your hypothetical 2019 12-team CFP champion. What do you guys think of this bracket? Do you guys think there should have been another team in this that wasn't? Who do you think would advance all this way given these teams? Let me know in the comments below. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell for all future videos. Everything college football right here on the Sports Nerds channel. We'll see you next time for the next video, guys.